All right. Welcome back, everyone. Today, uh, we're going to be diving into yeah. the world of architectural design software, right. specifically the whole AutoCAD versus Revit debate. Mm. Um, you know, you guys send us this awesome YouTube video um, from Balkan Architect called AutoCAD vs Revit. I saw that one. Why is everyone turning to Revit? Yeah. And we're ready to kind of unpack it. Yeah. Seems like there's a real shift happening, you know, in the industry. But Revit is definitely gaining traction. More and more architects kind of like singing Revit's praises. It's true. Um, so are you ready to kind of become fluent in like architect speak? Let's do it. By the end of this, you'll be able to hold your own at any design meeting. I love that. I like Wait, that. That's a good goal. So um, I have to say the video makes a really clever comparison to kind of illustrate the differences between these two programs. Yeah, definitely. It's um, it's the classic, you know. It's that classic, use the right tool for the job. Use the right tool, yeah. But they take it a step further. They take it a step further. With a really good analogy. Right, with this knife versus potato peeler. Yeah, I like that one a lot. What do you think about that? Um, well, I think it's great, you know, because it really gets the point across yeah. AutoCAD like a multi-purpose knife. Mm. It can be used for all sorts of drafting tasks right? across a lot of different engineering disciplines. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile. Yeah. Revit, on the other hand, is our specialized potato peeler. Right. It's built specifically for building design yeah. and documentation. Okay, I see where they're going with this. Yeah. But how does this actually play out, you know, like in a real world design scenario? Okay, so let's say you are designing a wall. Okay. In AutoCAD, you are essentially drawing lines, right. what we call vectors, to represent each layer of that wall. Okay. So that would be like the insulation, the framing, the drywall, so on and so forth. Okay. Then you need separate calculations for the area, the volume, the weight. Right. Then get complex, a lot of room for error. I see. So multiple files, potential for things getting misaligned. Exactly. I can see how that could become like a logistical nightmare. Exactly. Right. 100%, yeah. So in Revit, you'd create something called a wall type, right? Exactly, a wall type. And it's essentially a pre-built package of information about that wall. Mm -hmm. So think materials, cost, weight, even thermal properties, it's all there. Wow. To actually place the wall in your design, you just select two points and Revit takes care of the rest. So no more painstakingly drawing each layer nope. and recalculating everything if you make a change. It's so much faster. That sounds incredibly efficient. It is. It is. That's right. And here's where it gets really interesting. Oh. If you decide later on that you want to adjust that wall, maybe make it thicker, maybe swap out the insulation type, Yeah. Revit automatically updates all of the related calculations and documentation. Yeah. Oh, wow. You don't have to go back and adjust everything manually. That's a game changer. No yeah. wonder people are switching to Revit. I know. It seems like it just eliminates so much tedious work. So much. And potential for just like human error. 100%. Right. Yeah. It really does. Amazing. And that's just, you know, scratching the surface of what Revit can do. Really? One of the most significant advantages is its collaborative capabilities. Okay. Imagine multiple professionals being able to work on the same Revit file simultaneously in real time. Wait, hold on. Yeah. So an architect, yeah. a structural engineer, and an MEP specialist could all be working all at the same time on the same wall yeah. in the same file at the same time. Well, exactly right. Wow. And that's a huge deal for these large complex projects. Yeah. It drastically reduces the chances of clashes between different design elements, right. improves communication, yeah. and ensures that everyone is always working with the most up-to-date information. Now that you mentioned clashes, I remember reading about a project where this real-time collaboration in Revit actually prevented a major structural clash wow. that could have cost millions to fix. Have you ever, ever encountered anything like that? Oh, absolutely. I've seen firsthand how Revit's clash detection can save projects from major headaches. Yeah. In one instance, we were working on a hospital design and oh. Revit flagged a conflict between a ventilation duct and a critical structural beam. Wow. Catching that early in the design phase saved us winks of rework and a significant amount of money. Wow, that's a perfect example of how powerful this tool can be. Yeah. It seems like Revit is almost like having a virtual assistant looking over your shoulder. Right. Pointing out potential problems before they even become real issues. That's a good way to put it. Right. It does take a lot of the guesswork out of the design process. But you know, some architects, they argue that AutoCAD's 
simplicity yeah. allows for more creative freedom, especially in those early design phases. I see what you're saying. Where you're still exploring different ideas. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? That's a good point. Yeah. Um, there's definitely something to be said for the flexibility and intuitive nature of AutoCAD. Right. It's like sketching on a blank canvas, you know? Yeah. You can let your ideas flow without feeling constrained by predefined parameters. So it's not necessarily a case of one being better than the other. Exactly. Yeah. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. Yeah. It really depends on the specific project, the team's workflow, mm -hmm. even individual preferences. Right. Some architects might even use both AutoCAD and Revit, depending on the task at hand. That makes sense. Yeah. Speaking of different tasks, I remember the video touched on how these programs approach geometry differently. Oh, yeah. Something about dead geometry versus smart geometry. Yes. Can you break that down for us? Absolutely. So in AutoCAD, those lines that you draw to represent a wall, they're just that, lines. Right. They don't inherit know that they're part of a wall. Okay. Revit, on the other hand, utilizes what we call smart geometry mm -hmm. or parametric modeling. So when you create a wall in Revit, yeah. it's not just a collection of lines. Right. It's a wall object mm -hmm. with a whole set of properties and relationships built in. So that's how Revit manages to keep everything so seamlessly updated. Exactly. It's not just lines and shapes. Or, than that. It's like an interconnected system. It's a system, yeah. Right. And this is where Revit really shines its ability to generate detailed and accurate documentation. Okay. From floor plans, elevations, to schedules, 3D visualizations. It sounds like Revit is almost acting as a virtual architect. Uh-huh. Anticipating your needs and helping you avoid potential pitfalls along the way. You could say that. Right. Yeah, it's designed to facilitate a more integrated and holistic approach to building design. Yeah. And because those objects contain so much information, right. Revit can even generate things like quantity takeoffs and cost estimates. Oh, wow. Which is super valuable for project planning and budgeting. Wow, that's impressive. I'm starting to see the appeal. It's not just a drafting tool. It's like a whole project management system rolled into one. Yeah, it's pretty powerful. But I'm curious. If Revit is so powerful and efficient, why do people still use AutoCAD at all? That's a great question. And remember, AutoCAD is still a very versatile tool. Right. It's widely used in other industries besides architecture like mechanical engineering, okay. manufacturing. Mm -hmm. And even within architecture, there are certain tasks where AutoCAD might be a more suitable choice. Right. For example, if you're working on a small scale renovation project. Yeah. That doesn't require the full BIM capabilities of Revit. Right. AutoCAD might be a more streamlined option. And I imagine there's also a cost factor to consider. Sure. Revit is a pretty sophisticated piece of software, and I'm guessing it comes with a hefty price tag. You are right. Software licensing, training, implementation costs can be significant. Yeah. For some firms, especially smaller ones, the investment in Revit might not be justifiable. Right. AutoCAD has a lower barrier to entry in that sense. So it really comes down to weighing the needs of the project against the resources available. Yeah, exactly. There's no one-size-fits-all answer. Right. right. That's the key takeaway here. Both AutoCAD and Revit have their place in the world of architectural design. Yeah. It's about understanding their strengths and choosing the right tool for the job. Mm -hmm. And I think that Balkan Architect video does a great job of highlighting that. Yes. I completely agree. You know, listening to you talk about Revit, yeah. I'm starting to think about which software I would choose if I were designing my dream home. That's fun. Revit's efficiency and 3D visualization capabilities sound pretty tempting. It's definitely a powerful tool for bringing design ideas to life. Yeah. Imagine being able to virtually walk through your future home. Oh, wow. Explore different material options. Yeah. And even see how the sunlight will fall across your living room at different times of day. Wow. That would be incredible. That'd be pretty cool. Sign me up. Yeah. But seriously, this has been incredibly enlightening. It feels like we've gone beyond just comparing features and really delved into the philosophy behind these two programs. I agree. It's fascinating to see how these tools are shaping the way buildings are designed and constructed. Before we wrap up, yeah. there's one more thing I wanted to touch on from the video. Okay. They mentioned that Revit can also be used for urban planning and infrastructure projects. Yes, that's right. Is that something you have experience with? Actually, yes. Revit's capabilities extend far beyond individual buildings. Wow. With its powerful modeling and analysis tools, it can be used to design entire cityscapes, 
transportation systems, really and that. even analyze the environmental impact of large-scale developments. That's amazing. It really highlights the versatility and the potential of this software. For sure. It's not just about designing walls and windows, it's about shaping the future of our built environment. Exactly, and that's what makes this field so exciting. Yeah. The possibilities are truly endless. Well, I think we've officially reached architect speak fluency level. I think so too. But before we let you go, there's one question I can't resist asking. Okay, shoot. If you were starting a brand new architectural firm today, mm -hmm. Knowing everything we've discussed about AutoCAD and Revit, which would you choose as your primary design platform? That's a tough one. Yeah. There are so many factors to consider. Right. The types of projects I'd be taking on, mm. the size of my team, the budget. Mm. Okay, let's play a little game then. Okay. Imagine you've got a blank slate. You're right. You're building your dream team. Okay. And taking on a variety of projects okay. from like residential renovations okay. to large scale commercial developments. Got it. What would your ideal software setup look like? All right, I'm game. Yeah. If I were building my dream firm, I would definitely make Revit the cornerstone of my design process. Fair it's collaborative features, BIM capabilities, and the level of detail it allows for mm. are just too valuable to pass up, Yeah. especially for those larger, more complex projects. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. But would there be any room for AutoCAD in your workflow? You know what? I think there would be. Okay. AutoCAD is still a fantastic tool for certain tasks, Right. especially in those early conceptual stages of a project when you're sketching out ideas yeah. and exploring different design options. Mm -hmm. It's so intuitive and flexible. So it's not an either situation. Right. It's more about using the right tool for the right phase of the project. Exactly. Right. And let's not forget that AutoCAD is still the industry standard in many fields. Yeah, that's true. Being proficient in both would give my firm a competitive edge. Right. And allow us to collaborate seamlessly with other professionals who might be using AutoCAD. That's a great point. It sounds like having a solid foundation in both AutoCAD and Revit would be like the ultimate power move for yeah. any aspiring architect. I couldn't agree more. Right. It's all about having the right tools in your arsenal to tackle any design challenge that comes your way. Well, I have to say this deep dive has been a real eye-opener. Good, I'm glad. I feel like I've gained a whole new understanding of the architectural design world. Me too. It's a fascinating field. Yeah. Constantly evolving with new technologies and design approaches. And thanks to you, our listener is now equipped to impress their architect friends. That's right. With all this newfound knowledge, Lifely. they'll be dropping parametric modeling and clash detection into casual conversation like a pro. That's the goal we want to empower everyone to engage with the world of design in a meaningful way. Before we sign off, I want to leave our listener with something to ponder. Okay. We've talked a lot about the technical differences between AutoCAD and Revit, mm -hmm. but I'm curious, yeah. do you think the choice of software can actually influence the design itself? That's interesting. Can a building designed in Revit end up looking or functioning differently than one designed in AutoCAD? That's a great question. Yeah. And one that architects and designers are grappling with more and more these days. Right. It's certainly possible that the tools we use shape the way we think and the solutions we come up with. Yeah. Whether that leads to noticeable differences in the final product yeah. is a complex question with no easy answers. Right. Maybe that's something we can explore in a future deep dive. I would love that. I'm already looking forward to it. And to our listener. Yeah. If you have any thoughts on that question, we'd love to hear from you. Definitely. Share your insights in the comments and be sure to subscribe for more deep dives into the world of knowledge. Until next time. Awesome. Keep those brains curious and those imaginations ignited. 